morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, webinar. Thank you for joining. My name is Agnieszka Zając, and uh, on behalf of the Publications Office of the European Union and EU Open Data Portal, where I work, I would like to welcome you uh, to this webinar on EU budget um, as linked open data. In this webinar, we will present you the outcome of the project, which is financed from uh, European Commission DGIT program on interoperability solutions for Europe, which is also known as ISA Square. Uh, the work was executed and done by uh, PwC, to which I will hand over in a minute to guide you through this, um, for the results of this project. A few practical points. Uh, if you don't speak, please uh, mute your mic. Um, you can also post questions on the chat, and Brecht is also fine uh, with uh, interruptions if it's a, a short question that can prevent you from understanding um, what uh, is being said. But we also plan um, a few minutes at, at the end uh, for discussion. The, web the webinar will be also recorded and published on YouTube. And um, the slides will be published uh, on JoinUp. Okay, so now, Brecht, the, the floor is uh, yours for the presentation. Thank you, uh, thank you, Agnieszka. Uh, so, uh, also from my side, welcome to uh, to everybody. My name is uh, Brecht Wens. I work for uh, PwC, and I'm a, uh, a contractor for the uh, the Publications Office and the European Commission uh, Digit uh, Unit um, in uh, in this project. Um, let's uh, let's immediately get started and let's have a look at the at the agenda for today. Um, so I'll briefly explain uh, what the EU budget is about, what uh, what kind of information you find in the EU budget, um, and then uh, the second topic uh, we will talk about the linked EU budget. So uh, why uh, we opted to publish the EU bu budget as linked open data, and what is the added value of uh, of doing that? Uh, we will very briefly uh, explain the approach that we took. Um, and then uh, we will come to uh, what I find the most uh, the most uh, interesting part of today's presentation, or at least where the, mo the focus will be for today on a live demo of how the EU budget can be queried using uh, using Sparkle queries. And we will give two uh, examples of uh, visualizations that were created using the uh, linked EU budget data. Um, then we will uh, briefly uh, summarize how uh, how you uh, can reuse the budget, um, so how you can uh, get your hands on the data, how you can uh, query it uh, or download the, a, uh, the full data set. And then we will talk about the EU Data Fund uh, 2018 and uh, how that uh, that links to uh, to this uh, this uh, this project on the EU budget. Um, as Agnieszka already said, we will foresee some time at the end to answer uh, some questions, but please do not hesitate to interrupt me if you have any questions that come up during the webinar. Uh, it's uh, definitely okay to, uh, to ask away uh, if, uh, if you can't follow anymore or if my explanation is not clear. You can also use the chat window. Uh, my colleagues uh, will, uh, will address your questions there. Um, also, if you would like to, uh, to interrupt, you can uh, click the raise your hand button and uh, I will get notified and I can interrupt my presentation and give you the floor. So um, those uh, are the, uh, the practicalities for today. So let's have a look at uh, the first topic, the EU budget. So the EU budget is, um, is, 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 is a data set that is already available for, uh, for many years uh, in, in different formats uh, online. Um, and what can you find in, in, the, in the budget? Well, it's structured uh, according to different uh, sections. Uh, and uh, each uh, section relates to an EU uh, institution. So there's a section for the Parliament, the Council, the Commission, etc. Our focus, our main focus in this project was uh, the budget of the European Commission, which is uh, by far the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest part of the, of the budget. And this is uh, section three of the, of the budget. Um, the structure of, of section three is, is governed by, by titles. So each title approximately corresponds to a director general. And uh, within those titles, you will then find the amounts, the, the money that is uh, assigned to those, uh, to those units. Um, 
and then each title is organized in different uh, different levels, uh, being the chapters, articles, items, and sub-items. And articles and items are the uh, the budget lines that have money assigned to them. So, in simple terms, the EU budget is a list of lines and explanations of uh, how and where uh, EU uh, money is spent. Um, there are two types of, of amounts, uh, commitments and payments. So commitments are uh, the total costs of uh, legal obligations in a specific financial year. So this really gives an, um, an indication of um, uh, decisions that are taken to commit money for a specific purpose. Uh, payments, on the other hand, is a, uh, gives a view on uh, expenditure that is due in a current year, uh, but that arises from commitments made in the past. So commitments and uh, payments are, uh, are slightly different. For some amounts, we will see that commitments and payments are the same you know, when, a, uh, when money is assigned to a, for a purpose and also paid within the same year. Uh, obviously, the commitment and the payment amount is, uh, is the same. But more on that, uh, on that later in the examples. Um, there are actually two alternative views on the, uh, on the EU budget. Uh, and these views go across the different titles, across the different uh, directorates general. The first view is the uh, EU programs. So EU programs are areas with a, a special purpose. Um, it's important to note that not all budget lines relate to an EU program. So uh, EU program just group, EU programs group the amounts uh, that are related to that, uh, to that uh, focus area. Uh, but not every budget line has to be related to an EU program. This is different for the MFF, uh, so for the multi-annual financial framework. Uh, the MFF is actually a multi-year uh, budget that specifies for uh, different political categories what are the maximum amounts that uh, the European Union can spend on uh, uh, in those areas. Um, so. Um, Every budget line has to be related to an, uh, an, uh, an MFF code or uh, what we call a political category. Uh, so this is also a very interesting view on, uh, on the budget. Um, just move to the next slide. So traditionally, this is a very traditional view of, of, uh, of a budget. Uh, many government budget look, bu budgets look alike, and this is an example from, uh, from section three of the, of the European budget. Um, so we see di uh, different uh, elements that were just presented. We see them uh, back here. For example, uh, on top we see the title, uh, title uh, Economic and Financial Affairs, gives an indication of what uh, type of amounts you will find uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming pages. Um, it's divided in different chapters, uh, so a bit more, uh, more specific uh, information. And then you see on, uh, on article level, or the level below, which is called the item level, uh, you can actually find amounts. So you see there the appropriations for 2018, 17, and the out 16. Um, we also see in the in the, the PDF uh, where this uh, the screenshot comes from uh, that the MFF, so the the code of the multi-annual uh, framework, is indicated. And then you can find back uh, this uh, the information about that code uh, online. Uh, I will show you later uh, where you can find that information. So that's traditionally how, how the EU budget uh, was already published. Um, uh, of course, there are uh, some uh, some limitations with this uh, with this traditional uh, with this traditional uh, way of, of publishing uh, budgets. Obviously, PDF is not the best format for publishing data sets when we uh, want to encourage uh, the reuse of this data, and therefore we uh, we turned to uh, linked open data. So why did we do that? Because well, we identified certain challenges. The first challenge uh, with the, the, the traditional way of publishing was understandability. We saw that actually many users didn't understand uh, what was in the, in, the, in the EU budget. And therefore, uh, by applying linked open data principles, we, uh, we came with a data dictionary, which is published online. You will, you will get the link as well. That really explains every field, uh, everything, every data attribute that is in the EU budget. Um, another uh, problem that we had was that the information about uh, budgets and, and fiscal transparency uh, data was scattered across different uh, data sets. 
with link token data, we actually make these data sets linkable. And we have already uh, given an example of how we could link, for example, EU budget data to another data set like uh, spending data. Uh, you will see also that in, uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, another limitation uh, or, or challenge that we saw was the usability and interoperability of, of the EU budget. And with our, uh, with our project on linked open data, we came with uh, common data formats. Also linked to the next, uh, the next benefit, uh, providing it as data as a service. Uh, so basically, uh, any user can download or access th that part of the data that he or she is interested in, and also get it in a format that is most suitable for uh, for uh, the user. Um, and that goes also with uh, with machine readability and and, uh, and reasoning. Uh, I believe the, the traditional way of publishing uh, the budget, especially looking at PDFs, um, of course, very much limits the uh, possibilities for machine processing and machine readability. So those are, uh, in general, uh, challenges and, 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 and benefits of, of uh, basically the explanation why we went with linked open data for uh, publishing uh, the, uh, the EU budget. Um, so these uh, three formats were already available, a PDF, a CSV file, and an XML. Uh, these are available on EURLEX, so uh, these are really the, the official publications of the EU budget. Um, and they already offer a lot of value. Um, however, there were, were still some, some, some limitations, some challenges here. Uh, for example, of course, the, the PDF is, is more than 2,000 pages and not machine readable. Uh, CSV file is is uh, is already three star open data, but um, the structure is very complicated. It's not very clear what you can add up with what, um, because numbers are are presented at different levels of granularity. Um, the XML file is 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 is, is also very valuable already, uh, very usable. But often the terminology used is not clear. Abbreviations like uh, PECO, NMC, CATPOL are not explained. Um, and the structure of the XML is really focused on document formatting and not on providing uh, explanation or semantic value around the, uh, the data. Um, so therefore, to, to address these challenges with, uh, with linked open data, we now have a data model and definitions that are disclosed online. Uh, we use standardized reference data. Uh, we clarify the, the, the terminology, the abbreviations, and we actually avoided to use unclear abbreviations in the data as well. Um, we now have the possibility to create an integrated view uh, with other fiscal data sets, and we uh, will provide uh, the data as a service uh, in, the, uh, in the days to come. Um, so all this leads to increased reusability of the data. The approach that we took to get there is, uh, is quite straightforward. Uh, we started with uh, developing a data model and data dictionary documentation around the data. And this is available online on the link that you see at the bottom of the slide. Um, once we had the data model, uh, we transformed the data uh, to, to align with this, uh, with, this, uh, with this model. We basically created for the, uh, the, the technical people here an RDF uh, data set. Um, and then, of, since it's, it's fiscal data, quality assurance is very important. We run a lot of, uh, of, of, uh, of data validation uh, scripts and, and, uh, and we reconciled the data in our newly created data set with, for example, the PDF and the CSV files. And then uh, the stage that we are now in is the publication stage. This is uh, almost complete, so it will very soon be available uh, as linked open data on the uh, European data portal, uh, the European Union uh, open data portal. Okay, so um, that was a bit of context of uh, why we have been focusing on publishing the EU budget as linked open data. Now let's have a look what we can do with it. So um, to help users, uh, you or other users, um, get started with the data, we, um, we created a number of example queries. Uh, these are Sparkle queries, uh, which are quite common to, uh, to query linked open data. Um, and we have published these, these queries on, uh, online. I will soon share my screen and you will see uh, how to find them. Um, so the, uh, the first example that I will show you today, in total we have five examples, but I will focus on two. 
um, actually explains how we can, uh, by, by using queries, uh, search or um, return uh, budget lines that have specific words in, in, in their text, so in their headings. Um, and the question we are answering is, what are the amounts budgeted for matters related to fisheries and aquaculture um, for 2018? So I will share my screen and uh, show you how this can be done. Um, maybe first let me point, uh, so on the right you see uh, a, um, a small part of the, uh, of the data model. So what we are querying here is this, uh, this class that we call nomenclature. It, uh, it's actually all textual elements that are around uh, a specific amount. So we will focus on querying the values uh, inside the, uh, the, the heading of the nomenclature. So let me share my screen in just a second. So that works. Um, so when you go to the, uh, the, the, the web page that is on the slide, uh, which is the, uh, the basic EU budget vocabulary page on uh, JoinUp, a uh, platform of the European Commission for publishing um, uh, semantic uh, assets. Um, you will find a lot of information. So first, there is a presentation that explains a bit the business case, basically uh, what, I, what I presented a couple of minutes ago, uh, a short explanation of why we are doing this. Um, there are links to the conceptual data model. So if you really want to understand the different data fields that are inside the uh, EU budget, you can download this, uh, this file called the specification of the budget vocabulary. Uh, where you will find uh, definitions, uh, explanation of relationships, RDF, uh, an explanation of the RDF vocabulary, but also a UML uh, diagram. And here in the bottom, uh, we have a small section on the EU budget as linked open data, where you can find five example queries. So if we go to the first query, um, there's first a, a, an explanation there of uh, what, uh, what we are actually querying, what information are we trying to get out, some examples of the results. And uh, at the bottom, there are two documents attached. And the first is a, uh, a query that you can copy paste in the Sparkle endpoint of the uh, European Union Open Data Portal uh, and uh, adapt the query um, to, um, uh, to yeah, modify it to your, uh, to your needs. So I will open this to give you an example. So this is what it looks like. And then uh, in, a, in a minute, I will copy this into uh, our test environment and show you how it works. Another document that you find on, the, on that page is, uh, again, a, uh, the query, but with some explanation. So if you want to learn uh, Sparkle and if you want to uh, expand your knowledge on how to, how to write queries, uh, specifically for the EU budget, you can find here really an explanation of how the query is structured and where we are defining uh, which parts. Um, so, for example, here uh, you can see uh, that we are setting certain filters, uh, a language filter, and then if you want to get results in a different language, you could change it there. Um, we also show where we define the words uh, that we are looking for in the different uh, in the different uh, budget lines, like fisheries, aquaculture, uh, as, as, uh, as explained in the, uh, on the page, um, some, some technical elements of how to group results into the same variables uh, can be found there. So if I go um, to our test uh, just moving around some that are blocking my view. So this is uh, a test environment in which we uh, loaded the EU budget as linked open data. I already copy pasted the query. Um, I will soon show also what, how it will look like on the EU uh, open data portal. Um, but there the data is, uh, is not yet there. So um, we are currently showing it in the test environment. So this is the query that we saw earlier. Uh, as I said, with the language filters and, and, and uh, querying for specific, uh, specific words in a budget line. And then when we run the query, I currently put a limit of, of 100 to make it go a bit faster. Uh, when we uh, simply, we don't change any settings and we run the query, uh, 
we get an, uh, an HTML uh, page with a table that, uh, that shows the, the, the results. So we see uh, the, the number of the, uh, of the budget line, the heading uh, of the article and the item that is related to it. It's indicated whether it's a payment or a commitment. And when there is an amount uh, linked to it, the amount is also displayed uh, in the table. Now, this is just an, uh, an HTML page. And actually, when you're developing an app uh, to browse the budget or you want to do analytics or you want to integrate it with other data sets, you might need it in different formats. So uh, that's what we mean with we are providing it now as uh, data as a service. You can actually select uh, any format that, that is suitable to you. For example, if you want to re return uh, the values in, in a JSON format, you simply select JSON there. We run the query again. And then we will get uh, the results in, uh, in JSON. So that's how the, uh, the, uh, the endpoint uh, works. Um, voila. Uh, so that's the, uh, the first, uh, the first uh, query. I'm just going to have a look whether there are already some questions. Uh, okay. So again, if, if you would have questions or you want to see a specific part, don't hesitate to, uh, to interrupt. Um, let's now look at, um, at the second query that, uh, that we have uh, uh, prepared. Um, just. Go back to my slides. So the, um, the second query uh, is actually quite interesting because, um, as, as, as I explained earlier, uh, EU programs are really a, a very uh, interesting view on the EU budget. And uh, when, when presenting, for example, results of the EU budget or, uh, or, or when people talk about what the European Union is doing, very often uh, EU programs are referred to. Uh, many programs are also quite known, such as Horizon 2020 uh, or, or uh, the Erasmus Plus program uh, are known by, by, by many people. So if you want to see actually how much those programs cost and how much money they get assigned every year, uh, you can actually also query, uh, query those. Um, so we are definitely querying a different part of the data here. So we're not focusing on the textual, uh, textual explanation around budgets, but we're really focused on this link between amounts and EU programs. Uh, so um, uh, that's, uh, that's the ID. I will show you what the, uh, the query looks like. Uh, let me share my screen with you. Okay, so there we go. Um, Again, I'm on this, uh, this general page and we see the second query, query here says how to query EU programs and related budget lines. So what we intend to do here is specify a number of EU programs, Horizon 2020, Eurotom and ITER uh, for this example, but of course you can, uh, you can query many more EU programs. If you want to know which EU programs exist, you can refer to the uh, named authority list, uh, which is actually a list of all EU programs with a short explanation and a persistent identifier. Um, so what we intend to get is, uh, is just an overview of, of each program and which amount uh, is, uh, is spent on, the, on that program in uh, the year 2018. So again, the, the query is attached. Uh, right here. Um, so here we define the uh, the code of the of the EU programs that we wanna uh, that we wanna query. Uh, the rest of the query is quite similar to the previous query because in the end we are trying to get the same things, which is uh, amounts and budget uh, budget lines. Um, again, here you will find a link to this PDF that explains uh, that explains the queries. Uh, so when I open that again uh, and you go to query two. Uh, you will find some more some more details uh, on uh, on that. Um, building on, of course, the explanation in the previous query, we are not repeating again the same uh, basic things. 
so here you will find information on how to uh, specify uh, number formats to make sure we can add up uh, add up amounts. Um, we explain the filter that we put to get specific programs. Um, so that's uh, we exclude certain values, these, these PM values, which are budget lines that in, in a specific year don't have an amount anymore, but are there for historic reasons. So we filter out those amounts uh, because obviously you cannot add up uh, a, uh, a string value to a number. Um, so what does this query look like? Again, I, um, I preloaded it in our test environment, uh, same query. Uh, and when we run it, uh, I will run uh, just the HTML page now. Uh, it actually goes quite fast. It automatically adds up the different amounts uh, and uh, displays them per EU program. So that's quite, uh, quite straightforward. Um, uh, quite straightforward way of, of, of uh, querying the, uh, the budget. Um, if we have some time left at the end of the meeting, I can also show you uh, the examples of, of, other, uh, of other queries, uh, but uh, let's not, uh, not focus too much on that uh, right now. They're all available on this, uh, this web page that, that we shared with you. And um, uh, you can find the explanations uh, in, in, in the files that I showed you. Now, what can we do with this? So we now have uh, EU budget data as, as, as machine readable data. We can process it, we can merge it with other data sets, link it. Um, actually, it's structured quite well, so we don't have the risk of adding up uh, values that we should not be adding up. So it's quite safe to, to process the values uh, without risking double counting amounts, uh, which was not difficult, uh, not, not always uh, easy with, uh, with uh, traditional ways of, of publishing. And one thing that we did, is we created a, a dashboard um, uh, that I have to reload um, now, um, and I will I will show it to you. Very simple uh, dashboard um, that can be used to explore the EU budget. So you don't have to read uh, the, the 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 thousands of pages in the in the different sections. You don't have to uh, investigate uh, how the Excel file uh, or the CSV file is, is structured. Um, it's a, a um, let's say a more accessible way of, of uh, getting an insight in how the uh, the European Union is uh, is spending uh, its uh, its its budget its money. Apologies, um, I uh, will first show this one. So voila. Um, so what do we see here in the uh, in the EU budget? Actually, the same information that we saw before in the in the query results and in the in the PDF, but uh, displayed in more in a more accessible way. We can apply some filters. Um, for example, I only want to see the uh, the budget for the year 2018, and I'm only interested in uh, commitments and uh, non-differentiated amounts, which are amounts where the commitment value and the payment value is the same. So there's no difference between. Uh, so when I apply those filters, I actually get, uh, get a, a view on the EU budget of, of uh, 2018. I also see how it changed over, uh, over the past, uh, past three years, which is not a lot. Um, we are currently having uh, looking at the 100% of the budget and we have a, uh, uh, the total value that we are looking at as well. We can also apply filters per um, per title uh, per, uh, of, of the of the EU budget, so uh, which basically is about different uh, areas in which uh, in which money is spent, such as agriculture. Uh, if we select that, we we'll, we see budget lines that are uh, are, are linked to only uh, agriculture. I will remove that filter again now uh, to have a look at the full budget budget. We also have the MFF codes here. Um, so the, the, the codes of the multi-annual financial framework, uh, the meaning of which you can uh, you can easily find online. Uh, there are some links in the in the slideshow as well that we will share with you. Um, and then we can actually select uh, a certain part of the of the of the budget and zoom zoom in deeper on it. So by uh, validating this. 
Um, we can actually browse the different chapters, titles, and items of the EU budget uh, and, 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 and discover, uh, discover how, uh, how the, the, the money is spent. So, for example, if we look at the budget line now for the cohesion fund, we see that uh, this amount represents 6% of, uh, of the total EU budget, and it has increased with about 3.7% uh, uh, compared to, uh, to the year before. Um, and I believe that we are now at the uh, at the lowest level, um, so we cannot uh, go any uh, any deeper. Um, so that's one way of of, uh, of 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 using the EU budget uh, machine readable data. Um, simply only looking at the EU budget, but what we did as well was integrate it with another data set, uh, and this is a pilot project. So uh, I, I have to note that the uh, the numbers that you see here might not be exactly accurate uh, because we're still in uh, in a piloting phase and and and, uh, and there's still some uh, some some small uh, data issues to to resolve before this would uh, would ever go public but it's just to show you what the possibilities are so what we have done here is we linked this EU budget data set with another data set which is called the SDS data the financial transparency system uh, it's a system uh, uh, that's uh, that's run by uh, by DG uh, DG budget of the European Commission and in that data set, we find uh, an overview of uh, legal commitments or contracts that the Commission has with, uh, with many organizations, such as private organizations like uh, consultants like my, my own uh, employer or universities, uh, with a lot of metadata, a lot of information about those, uh, those users of, um, or those, um, those contractors. Uh, with their location and uh, actually by integrating those two data sets, we can kind of map the EU budget uh, to uh, to different countries, or uh, we can uh, by we can look at a, a budget line and see uh, which companies are, are actually getting uh, getting this money. So we go one step further instead of just looking at uh, at areas in which money can be spent. We actually see where the money uh, ends up. Huh? Who who is actually being paid with uh, with uh, EU money? Uh, the data that we see is not uh, 2018 data because that's not yet available. It's the 2016 data set, and I will show a bit what uh, what are the uh, the possibilities. So again, different filters. Uh, the area here is either the uh, budget of the European Union or the European Development Fund. So let's look at the EU budget. Uh, we can again filter by titles, which are uh, the same as we saw before. So we have again agriculture and rural development. Uh, we have all this budget, climate action, etc. Uh, we can filter by. I'm sorry, yeah, you can't see, but I have a, a small window in front of me. Um, so uh, we have uh, we can uh, filter by a corporate body, which is uh, more or less the, the different DGs of the European Commission, the Directorates General. So we see here DG Budge, DG Connect. Uh, uh, so if you really want to look into uh, what a specific DG is spending, we can uh, we can select here um, a, uh, a DG, and then uh, the whole um, dashboard will update itself to uh, to display only um, the data that relates to that uh, that corporate body. Uh, and again, we we also have a view uh, on uh, EU programs. Um, so we can, for example, look at the uh, the Connecting Europe facility. Uh, the staff program selected, and we actually see the total value of contracts uh, signed under uh, under staff. Uh, and this uh, this insight is really generated by combining the both data sets because this information is not in the uh, in the FTS data set and it is not in the EU budget data set. But but by putting them together, we can really link a contract to um, an EU program, for example. Um, and then again, here uh, in, in the bottom, we have uh, a lot of details about uh, about the, uh, the different contracts. Uh, so we have a contract key, a value of a contract. Uh, we can scroll through and see all of the ones that uh, that correspond to the filters that we applied. Um, a uh, the coordinator, which is basically the the company that leads uh, the contract, the number of the budget line, and uh, the description of the budget line, and the value of the budget line. And then we can actually calculate. Uh, how uh, uh, the percentage uh, of which a specific contract, so this uh, contract has in the total uh, budget line, um, 
assigned. So this really generates new insights. Uh, we can also filter, uh, for example, on, uh, by clicking on, on, on countries uh, on the map. Um, for example, if I zoom in a little, we see that uh, if we look at Belgium, where I'm, uh, where I'm based, and we apply the filter, the whole dashboard updates itself, and we see uh, a list of uh, contractors in, uh, in, 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 uh, that are located in Belgium that have contracts with the, uh, with the European uh, Commission. So here we have Otis, which is a uh, elevator company, uh, and the description of this contract, which has a value of, of almost 25,000 uh, euro, is uh, well, uh, cleaning and, uh, and maintenance. Um, uh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is what we can do with this. Um, we can also filter on a coordinator type. So if we want to see, uh, for example, how much money goes to nonprofit organizations, trust funds, uh, public organizations, uh, we can also filter on uh, filter on that, uh, and then we see uh, uh, again everything updates, and we can see contracts with uh, non-profit uh, organizations. So that's um, that's the way this works. Let me now move back to my presentation. So there we go. Uh, that was the demo of the visualization. Um, any questions until now? Quickly having a look. No. Okay, that's that's great. So let's again uh, summarize and and uh, and sum up how you can uh, how you can uh, access the data. So you will be able to access it uh, via uh, this website data slash eu odp uh, and then slash uh, link data, and you will end up at the Sparkle endpoint, which, which looks very similar as the test environment that I showed you, um, where you can uh, define the uh, the namespaces and the query itself. Also, different formats are available uh, in, uh, in in the production environment. Uh, so you can select for JSON or, or uh, an RDF uh, XML download, a CSV file, uh, or an XML file. Um, What's also interesting is that you can uh, get a query URL, so you don't always have to use the interaction with the, the endpoint and, 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 and use this to query. You can actually define a query in a, an HTTP URL and immediately, uh, immediately get, uh, get, uh, as, get the data return that you want to, uh, that you, that you want to uh, uh, address. Um, a second option is to download the, uh, the full uh, data set on uh, the, the data portal and load it yourself in your own environment. Uh, this might be interesting for several reasons, uh, such as setting limitations or uh, uh, querying quicker. Uh, this is especially advised if you really want to query the full data set and not only a part of it, uh, that you deploy it yourself in your own environment. Of course, the CSV, XML, and PDF files are also available uh, still on, on, on Urlex, uh, where you can find it for the past uh, many, many years. I think the, the, the CSV and XML files go back almost 10 years, so you can really find a lot of budget data there. So the EU Datathon, and I would like to pass the floor to, uh, to Simon, uh, who will give a bit of context here. So Simon, if you could unmute and... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm okay, here. Perfect. Uh, thank you very much, Press. Um, I just want to uh, give you a brief overview over the Datathon, just this one slide. But I think it's quite important and could be really interesting for participants there to use the budget. But first, what is the EU Datathon? The EU Datathon is an event organized by the Publications Office of the European Union. And our target is to get app developers throughout Europe who develop nice applications, tell different stories with uh, EU data. And um, the budget is, of course, one of the most important data sets for, for us and also for the EU. And now as uh, linked open data, it could be really interesting for participants to create something with it. Uh, as Brace mentioned already, there are lots of different things uh, what you can see. Maybe you can even link it with other data sets, for example, with national data sets or with, with other international data sets. I don't know, there are a lot of things which could be done. And uh, I would just briefly um, go um, below and you see the, um, the timeline. So we launched the competition on the 22nd of May 
And if you want to participate, you still have uh, more than two weeks to submit your project description. And the project description is really short. It's like one page, what you want to do, what you could imagine with the, with the budget, how you would combine it. And um, then we will notify you two weeks later. And then you get a, a lot of time to create the application. And um, I would be really grateful if you could think of, of um, something what can, could be done. And there are all, there's also prize money for each challenge and if the winning team is 5,000 euros. So um, I hope you um, you can participate. And uh, as it stands there, our idea is of course to get new insights, to enhance transparency, and maybe tell a real story. Yeah, that's from my side. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you Simon. Um, for the, the for explaining uh, the EU data uh, so uh, of course uh, EU budget data is is, is very interesting. Uh, also, uh, the, the the winner of last year's EU data was focusing on on fiscal transparency and and um, uh, actually using data from the FTS system. Uh, so we see it's, it's very interesting to do something with this, like building applications, generating new insights, uh, linking with other data sets. Uh, overall, anything that improves uh, transparency or, or storytelling initiatives, I think these are, are some great ideas already of, of what you can do with this uh, with this data. Um, a few pointers, maybe uh, when when using the budget, it's it's very important to uh, to pay attention to to these uh, to these things. So first, a point of advice is to really consult the EU budget vocabulary file that you find on JoinUp. Again, the link, uh, the link will be shared uh, with, the, with the presentation uh, to really understand the definitions of, of what, uh, what you're working with, uh, because misinterpreting or adding up wrong things uh, can, can, uh, can be quite, uh, quite bad in the context of uh, financial data. Um, when using the linked data sets, so the, uh, by, by using the RDF uh, data sets or, or the, the Sparkle uh, queries to get the, uh, the, the, um, the data, uh, that data set only includes data at its lowest level of granularity, which means it's actually safe to add up the values. So we don't represent uh, data at, uh, at, at aggregated levels, so we didn't already add up things, so it's, very, it's safe for you to, uh, to add up. Um, uh, add up the data, um, except for payments and commitments, because they have a different meaning. They have, uh, well, to some extent, you could say they overlap, so they should never be added up. You will get uh, almost a double bad budget value if you add up uh, payments and commitments, so that should really not be, not be done. Um, you can choose to either use the EU Open Data Portal uh, once the data is there uh, for queries or deploy it in your own triple store, uh, such as Virtuoso, a free, a free tool, also the one that we are using. Um, to deploy there, it has certain advantages. As I said, it will go, it will go quicker. Uh, if you want to launch very big queries, like the queries we use to build the visualization dashboards, uh, it's better to do this uh, and not to crash uh, uh, any any servers? Well, actually, it will. Uh, it might not, not work because of timeout settings. And uh, as I said, accuracy is key when working with financial data. So please, uh, when you use this data, uh, do some spot checks. Reconcile your results with the results that we have in other sources, such as the PDF. Uh, looking into it manually to see whether uh, whether your uh, data, your application, or your uh, your dashboard works. Uh, we also did that, and it. Um, uh, to get uh, to gain uh, assurance over the data that we have published, but of course, when you reuse and process the data, it's important that you do it yourself uh, as well. So some references. Um, so we have the uh, the EU budget vocabulary uh, available on uh, the uh, the join up website, and the example query decks we have been in the meantime published and added uh, to the same page. So you will find both there. Um, the Sparkle endpoint of the European Union Open Data Portal, which will soon include the, uh, the data, uh, is available at this link. Uh, so the third uh, bullet point. The uh, very formal official publication of the EU budget is available on, uh, on Eurlex, uh, on the budget page. Um, so there you can find a CSV file, a PDF file, and an XML file. Uh, 
And a very interesting website as well is the, uh, the, the last one, the Budget Explains, um, which, uh, which actually explains, again, the difference, the difference between payments and commitments, for example, which gives you more insight into these MFF, uh, multi-annual financial framework codes, what they mean, what are the, uh, what are the ceilings, what, uh, what are the political categories about. Uh, all that information can be found on the, uh, the Budget Explained website. It's very, uh, very interesting, well-written, uh, and, and very helpful. To find out more about the EU data phone, uh, the rules, the, uh, the, the, the formalities of how to submit uh, proposals, etc., cetera, uh, you can refer to the, uh, the website uh, on publications.europa.eu slash EU data uh, So if you're interested, uh, uh, I, I would really uh, recommend that you, uh, you go ahead and, and submit a proposal. It's a very fun event, very interesting, also in terms of networking. So um, I really hope to see uh, some of this data being used there uh, again in, in, in this year's competition. So we are getting uh, towards the end of our of our presentation, and we have uh, we have foreseen about another ten minutes uh, for uh, for for any questions or any clarifications that you would like to get. Um, also uh, towards uh, my colleagues in the publications office, and Jessica or Simon, if you would like to add anything, please uh, please go ahead. Um, so, are there any questions? Um, I would like to ask one thing first. Uh, I mentioned it for for the data tone to combine it with national data, uh, with national budget data sets. What are the barriers? What what is difficult there? Do you have some experience there? Um, yeah, what is I think what, when looking at national budget depends which country. Uh, not not all countries are as mature in uh, in, in publishing uh, publishing their budget uh, as reusable data. Um, I think some some interesting pointers there are that the general structure is often similar. So you there are some basic uh, basic points at which you can uh, can really link to to national budgets. Uh, for example, a budget is usually um, uh, structured by, either by, by some kind of programs or political categories like defense, agriculture, those type of things we really see as well in national budgets. Um, so uh, it might be interesting to also map then the, the structure of the European budgets to the national budgets to have a first uh, level of, of integration. Uh, so I think that would be, uh, mm -hmm. be the most interesting uh, entry point for uh, for linking to to national budgets. What can also be done, and that would also be very interesting, is to use uh, or extend the the vocabulary, the data model itself, to match uh, a certain national budget, and then to compare budgets across across countries. That has not yet been done. Um, well, to 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 a, a uh, well, to some extent, it might have been done by some organizations, but really, in a structured way, it has not yet been uh, been done. So uh, that could also be an interesting uh, an interesting approach. There's also a question in the chat box, right? Yes, I see. Um, unfortunately, uh, the uh, the dashboards have not yet been made publicly available. Uh, for one reason, because the one on FTS uh, is really a pilot, uh, a pilot case, and has not yet been uh, been completely reviewed uh, by the budget department, and therefore we uh, we have to be careful with making it available uh, publicly. But there is a plan to do this in the future. Uh, so the one on EU budget and FTS uh, is is not yet uh, not yet publicly available. So unfortunately, that. Uh, that will not be, uh, be possible. And uh, Brecht, how much does it add on complexity if you work with a LOD data set? Um, well, it might add some complexity from one side, but it actually takes away a lot of complexity on the other side. So the I, I would say the added complexity of working with linked open data is that you need that there is some um, uh, basic knowledge uh, required. So you need to understand a bit how, how the ripple work uh, instead of, 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 of uh, the tabular data that we're used to work with. Uh, and you need to have some knowledge about the Sparkle queries to, to really access the data. 
So that definitely adds some complexity, but there's a lot of, uh, of, of, of good sources available online that can really help you get started there. And that's also why we created these example queries uh, to really show uh, or to, to give a starting point and uh, that, that you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can work with and adapt and those queries. It takes away complexity on the, um, I would say, once you know the, uh, the, the technical knowledge required, it really takes away the complexity of the, um, the budget itself. So I think the terms are really better explained. Uh, there is less risk of making uh, errors when, when doing calculations. Uh, because of, of this, uh, this design approach that we only represent numbers at their lowest level of granularity. Um, there is a very structured link between amounts and EU programs or amounts and, uh, and, and political categories. Um, so on, on those levels, it really takes away a lot of, uh, a lot of complexity. Okay, so if there are no more questions, um, I believe we can close the webinar here and I would like to thank you all for uh, participating. If you have any, uh, any other questions uh, or uh, that, that will come up in the coming days, do not hesitate to contact us. Um, my information is also available on the join up, uh, the join -up page. Um, so feel free to reach out uh, if you have any questions and we're, we're happy to help you. And I really look forward to seeing the, uh, the entries for the EU data form. Uh, can I say something? Uh, yeah. yes, so, um, yes, so I would like to thank uh, to everybody for joining this webinar. And um, as a publisher of the budget, we are very much interested in use cases, um, how you want to use the, the EU budget as a data set. Um, so, um, as you are attending this webinar, um, I assume that you are, are either interested in uh, the budget data set uh, for exploration or the process of linked data. So it would be really uh, valuable for us also to hear from you um, about your needs and expectations uh, towards, towards future development um, um, and also um, let's say, how would you like to explore what is important for you, um, let's say, in this uh, data set in particular, what is interesting, um, and also uh, the feedback from, from the webinar itself. So you can uh, send it either to, to Brecht, uh, or uh, I will post in the chat um, the functional mailbox uh, of our team, the uh, Open Data Portal. And uh, if you find a few minutes to, to share um, with us uh, your feedback, it would be very, very much appreciated. So thank you very much, um, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody.